Did you know? Although some of the earliest rumors about Zelda games have been lost to time, a handful have been documented in physical and online media. One prominent rumor about the first Zelda claimed that it had a third quest. If the player beats The Legend of Zelda, or names their character Zelda on the first playthrough, they'll be able to play a slightly altered version of the game known as the second quest. The rumor alleges that if the second quest is beat, a third quest will be unlocked. This claim was even taken at face value by Nintendo's official magazine in Sweden, known as the Nintendo Video Spiel Club. In the sixth issue of the magazine for January 1989, there's a segment that reads, Have you heard that there's a third quest? Yes, there is. After clearing the second quest, you're a return to the beginning where everything looks the same. But after a while, you will notice that things are no longer the same as they were in the second quest. What are you waiting for? Go ahead and explore quest number three. However, this rumor was entirely fake, and no third quest exists in the game. There was eventually a third quest of sorts released in the form of BS The Legend of Zelda for the Super Famicom Saddle of View add-on, but this wasn't until 1995. Another prominent rumor stated that it was somehow possible to equip Link with a Santa suit, though some rumors reported this as a set of pajamas. This claim likely originated from one of Link's hit frames. When Link takes damage, he flashes a various range of colors, including white and red, which is very reminiscent of Saint Nick. As you might expect, it isn't possible to unlock this Santa-esque color scheme in the game without the aid of cheats or hacking. Another rumor from the time alleged that you could beat the title entirely without using the sword. This claim persists to this day, possibly due to the Zelda swordless speedrunning category. However, even these runs use the sword at least once. It's only possible to make it as far as the fight against Ganon without the sword, as the player needs a sword to defeat Ganon. Another often cited rumor is that players could, by whatever means, acquire a gun in the game. There have been several variations on this story, such as acquiring a gun from the old man at the start of the game, to performing an elaborate set of tasks to possess one. Although Zelda II The Adventure of Link wasn't as popular as the first Legend of Zelda, it still had its rumors. One rumor alleged that Nintendo was limiting the amount of new games they sent to stores in North America in 1988. This was apparently so that demand exceeded supply, creating buzz. This would also force customers who wanted Nintendo games at Christmas to buy older titles, clearing out Nintendo's unsold stock. This rumor stems from Zelda 2 being originally planned for release in February 1988. The title was teased many times throughout the year in Nintendo Power, then called Nintendo Fun Club News, but the title was ultimately pushed back to October. In one issue of Nintendo Power, it was stated that the delay was due to a shortage of computer chips needed to manufacture cartridges. This was suspicious in the eyes of the public, as the chip shortage Nintendo mentioned only seemed to affect Zelda 2 and Super Mario Bros. 2. This led to people assuming Nintendo were lying about the chip shortage and were creating artificial demand for their products. However, this rumor doesn't stand up to scrutiny. While it may be true that Nintendo underestimated the demand for their games in 1988, the chip shortage for this moment in time is well documented. On top of this, it's estimated that Nintendo sold 33 million cartridges that year, but could have sold 45 million carts if they fulfilled the existing demand. It seems unlikely that Nintendo would willingly lose 12 million units in sales to create buzz for a few games. For The Legend of Zelda a Link to the Past, there were rumors about a special set of yellow clothes for Link. To unlock the rare mail, players would have to enter the Dark World, then get the magic hammer at the Palace of Darkness and immediately leave. They'd then have to beat the Swamp Palace, Thieves' Town, Skull Woods, and Misery Mire in that order, then return to the Palace of Darkness and complete it. Then, if the player went to the Ice Palace and opened the large chest, they'd have a set of yellow clothes instead of blue ones. This rumor was clearly false, and could be disproved simply by completing the proposed steps and finding the standard blue mail. Surprisingly, the claim was featured on several prominent cheat websites throughout the late 90s and 2000s, but most sites have since deleted the rumor. Just as a quick aside, we won't be talking about the Chris Houlihan room or any similar secrets in Zelda games. The existence of the room was publicly announced in a contest where the winner would get a secret room named after them in a future Nintendo game. Although there was some speculation over how to find the room, we don't feel that we can class the situation as a rumor. This is because the room's existence was clearly communicated by Nintendo in advance, and was implemented as described, a secret room. To make sure our rumor videos are consistent, we need to define what a rumor is, and we believe a rumor needs to either have a questionable point of origin, or a questionable authenticity from its inception. Whether or not the Houlihan room existed has neither. Again, it was also included as described. 
being the first portable Zelda title didn't stop Link's Awakening from getting its share of rumors. The final dungeon of the game takes place in the Windfish's Egg, which starts with an empty room leading into a second room with a pitfall. This second area is almost entirely floorless, but there is a ledge on the other side of the room beside a doorway. The ledge is unfortunately inaccessible, but this didn't stop fans from speculating what could lie beyond it. Some believe that the room led to the true final boss, and some thought the door led to a secret ninth instrument, or even another dungeon. However, the room leads to nothing. Another rumor about Link's Awakening stated that a topless mermaid was hidden in the game. This claim surprisingly has some truth to it, and may have stemmed from players who imported the Japanese version of Link's Awakening. Although the mermaid Martha is in all versions of the title, the Japanese game has a more lewd tone. In the English game, Martha emerges from the water after Link has brought her a lost necklace. In the Japanese version, Martha emerges after Link brings her a bra. The implication in the Japanese game is that Martha wouldn't come out of the water until she was able to cover herself up, implying she was naked. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time was an ambitious game for its time, and the title's popularity and depth made it an ideal target for rumor mongers. Rumors about the game usually stemmed from a misunderstanding or hoax, and were easily debunked. One prominent rumor involved the Running Man, who appears frequently running around Hyrule Field. The player can race the Running Man with the goal of beating a certain time, but it's impossible to actually beat him to the finish line. After Ocarina of Time's release, rumors began spreading that it was possible to beat the Running Man. These claims persisted for over a decade, culminating with a 2009 video by YouTube user Rusty Sporks, which showed them winning the race. Rusty Sporks claimed to have started a race, then traveled back in time by seven years, then waited seven years in-game. Since Ocarina of Time's days are four minutes long, the player would have to wait about 7.1 days in real life. After waiting for seven years, the Running Man would finally meet Link on the bridge in defeat. This, however, was fake. Players have tried all kinds of tactics to beat the Running Man, such as hacking the game to speed up Link. However, the game is programmed so that the Running Man will always beat the player by at least one second. There's also no dialogue in the game's ROM in the event of the player beating him. Another rumor which emerged shortly after the title's release claimed the game had a hidden cheat code that made everyone at the Lon Lon Ranch naked. Allegedly, game translator Dan Owson claimed there was a secret code in the game that would cause Malin, Talon, and Ingo to become naked. Fans asked Owson to publish the code after this rumor was posted on the fan site Closet of Hyrule, but Owson denied the code's existence, and also denied that he'd ever mentioned such a code before. Several other sites claimed the secret could be unlocked without a code, as long as the player followed a long list of 66 steps. The steps ask the player to do seemingly meaningless tasks all over Hyrule, and almost comes off as comical. In 1999, the admin of Closet of Hyrule admitted they'd created the rumor themselves, and asked Zelda fans to stop messaging Dan Owsen for the code. Some players also posted about their encounters with a mysterious pig-like enemy, nicknamed El Puerco, which allegedly had a small chance of appearing during the race with Dampe in the graveyard. This rumor was dismissed by most of the Zelda community, but it's been hypothesized that the creature could have been a glitched re-dead enemy. The more likely explanation is that El Puerco is a complete fabrication, as no evidence of such a creature was ever supplied. Yet another absurd rumor stated that players could somehow obtain an M16 at Kakariko Village. One version of this claim alleged that using a bomb or the hammer in a specific location in Kakariko after beating the Water Temple would unlock the weapon. Other rumors were at least partially grounded in reality. After Ocarina of Time hit store shelves, fans looked back at how the game was covered in the media and noticed several places and features were absent from the final game. As you might expect, this led to a large amount of speculation and rumors. One area that was planned to appear in the 64DD expansion was nicknamed the Unicorn Fountain by fans. It was said to still be in the game and could be reached by going through a mysterious tunnel located under the ice in Zora's Domain. Early screenshots from the game also show Link performing a sword beam attack, where the player can fire a beam out of their sword if they're at full health. Since both the sword beam and unicorn area had been seemingly removed or hidden, fans speculated that the beam could be unlocked at the unicorn fountain. Some players also speculated that melting the ice at Zora's domain as adult Link would grant access to the tunnel that led to the unicorn fountain. A widely repeated method of doing this involved entering the Great Deku Tree as adult Link and finding a hammer that could shatter the ice. This can't be done in normal gameplay, however, and hacking the game to do so reveals that nothing is different if the player visits the Deku Tree as adult Link. This fact became irrelevant when some players found a way to glitch themselves under the ice in Zora's domain and found nothing. 
Easily the most prominent rumor for Ocarina of Time stated that the Triforce could be collected as a physical item in the game. This rumor likely stemmed from early screenshots and video, which seemed to show Link obtaining the Triforce. The final game also shows an imprint of the Triforce in the title's menu, which is significant as these outlines usually mean an item can be collected. Several possible methods of finding the Triforce were passed around, including throwing a bomb into the center of the lava pool outside of Ganon's castle, destroying all the gossip stones found in the game, and completing the title 100% without taking any damage. Some gamers even believe the Triforce could be found at the Unicorn Fountain. Several of these tales also claim that Dark Link would appear in Link's home partway through trying to obtain the Triforce. The Triforce rumor was given some credibility in 1999 by a series of screenshots posted on the fan site Hyrule The Land of Zelda. The screenshots were sent to the site's owner by a person claiming to be a 17-year-old Colombian woman named Ariana Almandos. The images appeared to show Link obtaining the Triforce in a previously unseen area of the game, which was supposedly in the Temple of Light. Ariana claimed this was possible by using the song Overture of Sages, which was apparently taught to the player by Kepora Gabora before young Link pulls out the Master Sword and would warp the player to the Light Temple. However, close analysis turned up several inconsistencies in the screenshots, such as Link's sword hanging on the wrong shoulder in one picture. The creator ultimately admitted the entire story was an elaborate hoax. Data mining of Ocarina has also been fairly comprehensive in recent years, and no evidence has been found to support that the Triforce can be collected, or that the Sword Beam or Unicorn Fountain are in the final game. Although Ocarina of Time had a fair amount of dungeons, rumors of even more dungeons popped up several times after the game's release. Tales of a secret hidden dungeon started spreading shortly after the title's release. Players discovered that playing the Song of Storms in one spot in the haunted wastelands made lightning flash, which uncovered a distant pyramid-like structure. Sandstorms usually stop the user from pursuing it past the area's boundary, but cheating makes reaching it possible. Approaching the pyramid will reveal that there's no concealed dungeon, and the supposed pyramid is just a rock. A rumored second secret dungeon was often discussed by Zelda fans, known as the Sky Temple. No actual evidence, real or fabricated, sparked speculation of the dungeon's existence. The Sky Temple was rumored to exist because every sage in the game has a respective temple that the player gets to explore, all except for the Sage of Light, Rauru. Because there was no dungeon attached to Rauru in the main story, players assumed there had to be a secret dungeon somewhere in the game. As the rumor wasn't based in reality, the supposed ways to reach the Sky Temple were often outlandish. Some rumors stated that players needed to kill several hundred style children after freezing the day and night cycle with cheats, which would summon a gigantic skeleton monster. Killing this giant apparently opened a portal to the Sky Temple. Another rumor alleged that a cow in Death Mountain would fly Link to the temple after beating the game. The previous mentioned YouTube user Rusty Sporks also made a video that only exacerbated the spread of the rumor. In the video, Link is shown under the ice at Zora's Domain, where he walks into a tunnel which takes him to the supposed remnants of the Sky Temple. As you might expect, this video was fake, and no evidence of any such dungeon has been found to exist in the game's data. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask may not have been as popular as Ocarina when it launched, but it still attracted the rumor mill. Although many masks can be worn in Majora's Mask, the titular mask itself is never worn by the player in the game. This led to several rumors popping up that claimed it was possible to get Majora's Mask as a wearable mask. One rumor stated that if the player beat Majora ten times in a row without losing a single time, and without getting the Fierce Deity Mask, a Moon Child would give Link Majora's Mask instead of the Fierce Deity Mask. As you might expect, there was no evidence to back up this claim, even 19 years after the game's release. At the start of Majora's Mask, the player passes an unusual twisted tree that resembles a Deku. Later on in the game, the Happy Mask Salesman teaches the Song of Healing to the player, which helps beings heal in various ways. Players eventually meet the Deku Butler at the Deku Palace, who later gives them the Mask of Sense and reminisces about his son. As the game's credits play, the Deku Butler is seen mourning beside a twisted tree, implying the dead tree was his son. This spawned rumors that the sun could be restored as a living Deku somehow. The methods of restoration often involved the Song of Healing, but they were often debunked immediately. This is because the path back to the Twisted Tree is blocked off after the player reaches Clocktown. Despite this, it's possible to glitch back to the area or use cheat codes to go back. Unfortunately, none of the rumors gave an accurate means to revive the Deku Butler's son. Not all rumors about the game have a dark tone, however. If players go to the Astral Observatory, they might notice a caged cuckoo near the telescope. 
Some players claimed that it was possible to free the cuckoo through various means. One method was to shoot an arrow directly at the chicken, which would hit the middle of the cage, then to shoot a fire arrow, an ice arrow, and then a light arrow right at the cage. This would supposedly let the chicken loose. Due to the growing prevalence of the internet in the early 2000s, information on the development of video games was becoming more sought after, and their production was documented more thoroughly. Unfortunately, this desire for information led to rampant rumors. After The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker was first shown at Nintendo's Space World event in 2001, fans began speculating on why the game's visuals were so different to the tech demo shown in 2000. There was a rumor that Nintendo changed the art style because the tech demo looked too mature. Some people even circulated a fake interview with Shigeru Miyamoto. Miyamoto allegedly claimed that the original direction was realistic and may have been too violent, which would scare away small children. Some fans claimed that the then-unnamed game's visuals were quote simple because it was a full-on remake of the original Legend of Zelda. The animations in The Wind Waker's reveal were very smooth and fans took notice. This even led to a rumor claiming the smooth animation was due to some sort of procedural code that was linked to players having one-to-one -one control over Link's sword with the analog stick, similar to the Ape Escape games. A second GameCube Zelda was rumored to be in development in 2002 by the same source that claimed Link would have one-to-one -one swordplay. Needless to say, the images provided were laughably fake. Another rumor around this time claimed that Wind Waker's story would involve Link traveling to the Underworld to save Princess Zelda. Other rumors said the story would take place before all other Zelda games, and that every character would be voice acted thanks to the GameCube having far more storage than the N64. Some claimed that you'd be able to play as other characters such as Ganon and Zelda, and there would be a two-player cooperative mode in the game. And of course, people claimed you'd be able to obtain the Triforce. These last two rumors had some truth to them, as a kind of two-player gameplay was possible with the Tingle Tuner, and Link obtains a third of the Triforce in the game. Before Wind Waker released, there were rumblings that Ocarina of Time would be coming to GameCube. Further rumors elaborated on this, claiming a three-disc collection would be coming out containing a director's cut of Ocarina of Time with unreleased dungeons from Master Quest. The rumors also claimed this version would have graphical options that let players choose between updated or classic N64 graphics. This would also include a making-of documentary, a music collection, along with a cloth map of Hyrule, pocket watch, art book, and a character figurine. Although some aspects of this rumor never came to be, a Zelda collection did end up coming to the GameCube that included both Ocarina of Time and its Master Quest version. Shortly after the Wind Waker launched, the fan website Hylia.com reported that the game had been issued a recall. This was apparently because Nintendo hadn't properly submitted the title's content to the Entertainment Software Rating Board and had to resubmit the game to acquire a new rating. However, this turned out to be an April Fool's joke on behalf of the site's webmaster. Join us next week for Zelda Rumors Part 2. If you aren't subscribed, make sure you do to catch our future videos. And if you're looking for more trivia, check out our videos on Mario and Super Smash Bros. Rumors.